Hello everyone, this is Main Street with Constance. I am Constance Lyles Brown Willingham. Have you locked your keys in your vehicle lately? Do you know what to do besides panic? Now, new vehicles and old vehicles, you can't do the same thing just because of technology changes, all that sort of stuff. Now, you can call for help. But when you call, not dial 911 or something, it needs to be life-threatening and critical. If you've got a child in the vehicle, the motor's running, something like that, or you have a, an older person, maybe any other person in there that's having a health issue, you can then call 911, okay? But otherwise, you need to be a little prepared for such efforts. You go out and start your car up, let it warm up. Do you lock it or not? Where is your key? Is it in the ignition? Things to think about that. So one thing I advise is not to try any MacGyver uh, methods of getting into your vehicle. Locking your vehicle with your key in it, that's enough to ruin your day. What about a spare key? You can keep it in your wallet. You can give it to a friend. A friend that you know that will come and rescue you. Keep your day from going down in the ditch. There's so many new things on the newer vehicles, anti-theft systems, whatnot. <laughs> Somebody's showing me, from the audience, showing me their spare keys here. So there's a hat a box, uh, older vehicles, that might be something easy to do. But you have to be careful with copied keys. Nowadays, a copy key does not do the same as the original key. It may unlock the vehicle, but will it start it? It has an anti-theft security system on it. Unlock remotely. What does that mean? Some of us on the newer vehicles, you have the automated system OnStar, and there are a few others out there that you can call hopefully you still have your telephone with you and it's not locked inside your vehicle, that you can call OnStar, Sync, Blue Link, or Embrace, and they will unlock the door remotely. Depending on the age model of the vehicle, there's some limitations to that. What about those vehicles where you have a code to put in? And you have to remember, we have so many passwords and code numbers and all this stuff, so I don't know how you keep up with all of that, but that's one way that you can enter your vehicle without the key. Then there are those that use the fingerprint, that sort of thing. This is all high technology. Uh, the fingerprint thing you can only find on Ford's Lincoln and Mercury. You can also make your phone a key, but you have to have your phone with you and not locked in the vehicle. There's something that you can have set up on your phone that will unlock your car for you. How about that? All this technology and capabilities. Are you ready? We just want you to be a little more prepared because getting locked out of your vehicle is not the highlight of my day, trust me. So, you, got, you don't have any of all of that, but you need to call for help. So, you need to have those services, the contacts in your phone. Maybe your insurance company can help uh, Check your vehicle insurance. Do they have a locksmith a lockout system or that's included in your insurance? That's good to know in advance. So you're already paying for your insurance, and that's a little sweet little deal that's covered. How about that? Roadside assistance. If you're doing a lot of traveling on the road, especially if you're by yourself or female or whatever, it gives you a, a good warm feeling that if something occurs, happens to your vehicle while you're on the road, you can pick up your phone and call roadside assistance. There's also towing companies. I have a couple in my phone, just in case you never know. Or I've been told you can call 411 and get the information of a local towing company wherever it is that you're located. Uh, they're locksmiths and dealerships. Now you're talking a little more money here. So having a spare, it's worth it. So what else is there? You want to make sure you've got a replacement key. You can get a spare key copied or the newer vehicles, you can go back to the dealership and they will give you an actual 
real, real key. A copied keys on the newer things, they're not the same. They don't do the same thing. Now, just a heads up that some of this stuff can be expensive. So if you've got to call a locksmith, um, they're going to ask you for the VIN number, the vehicle identification number, proof of ownership. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of thefts out there. So, how to prevent a lockout? Number one, keep your keys on your person. Do you have a little uh, belt loop pocket, whatever, on your wrist or something? But you need to keep it with you. You need to know where it is at all times. Always lock doors from inside when you are inside your vehicle. Everybody has their own little habit, but you should be consistent with your habit. You get out, did I lock my vehicle? I don't remember. So being consistent, have a pattern and routine is helpful also. Make sure when you get out of your vehicle, you've got the key with you. Some people are in a hurry and a rush and stuff and they forget all about that. You can use a lanyard or a keychain uh, to carry it around, part of your accessories. You can buy carbingers to attach to your belt loops or bag. Just be consistent. Make sure your keys are in a safe place and make it a habit. It's nothing like ruining your day when you can't get in your vehicle and you see the key in the ignition. Not a good day. But anyway, we've got a plan, some ideas to think about to prevent that. Even maybe having a hide a key like some people have at their homes. Just some ideas and thoughts. Think about it and make a plan. We'll catch you later. Hey everybody, more information on Main Street happenings? Check here, Main Street with Constance. Brought to you by Bledsoe Telephone Cooperative, your full service telecommunications provider right here in the Sequatchie Valley.